so AM guides, right? Like I was telling, you have a content team. They talk to product matter experts, developers, product owners, everyone, and they scramble for that information. And once they have that information, they use AEM guides to create that documentation, right? You have a web editor, web editor where you are creating documentation uh, using data topics and maps, right? And then you are using tagging, versioning, workflows, review, translate reports. EM guides provide you all these uh, facilities. Once you have that single source of truth and your content is created, then you worry about publishing it. Oh, now do I publish it to a website or do I send it to my CRM like uh, Salesforce? Salesforce wants this technical documentation because inside Salesforce, uh, we have agents who are trying to solve a customer problem, right? They need this troubleshooting document. So you may want to send it to um, CRM through REST API, or you have a app that relies on this documentation. In the app also, you are trying to surface, like there is an issue when you're trying to change the Zoom background. And let's say there is an info icon or a question mark icon that says, oh, click here to learn more about, right? And as soon as you click, the troubleshooting document shows up on the product itself, right? Uh, and, and PDFs, you can dynamically generate PDFs and on the doc, like you, if you, if you go to, let me show you one example. Companies, you go to Broadcom, right? This is their technical documentation website. Mm, you go to one of their products, enterprise, CA enterprise software, and under business management, like you, you have to drill down. Um, you see, this is the AEM guide. They have this content written inside AEM guide, right? And then as soon as if you want to download it, uh, okay, here they did not add a download button, but they generated a site output to this one. Oh, they have it here. They generated a site output to date one, but the, let's say your customer wants to download it, they can immediately download, right? So the content was created, it was published as, an, uh, as a site, as well as a PDF. So as soon as I click, you can see it's coming from DAM, Broadcom, uh, the PDF was created for that version, right? And you have the same thing now, oh, I want a different version. You can go back to a previous version and still show the, uh, the same material for a previous version. The same thing you cannot achieve with content fragment and other things, but right, you can, like if you have a bunch of developers working on re-implementing this feature, but the goal is how do you do this quickly in a more scalable, more understandable fashion, right? So this is Broadcom and then you have Blackberry. Um, so I wanted to show something here. Okay, so um, you were asking, right? Um, what does an AEM guides developer need? Um, AEM developer knowledge. If you look at the BlackBerry site, um, let's say you have this documentation created inside AEM guides and you publish it as a site, it would look something like this. With this is this is not rich like the ui is not fancy right it's just just out of the box out of the box you would look it would look something like this or let me show on my local it would look something like this this is how you get the site once you publish a site from your content right bare bones basic functionality now to make this look into like make if you want to make it beautiful like this or much more beautiful like this, or even beautiful is Palo Alto Networks. They, they have an amazing AEM uh, developer team. Um, yeah, see, they, their UI is much more fancy. So this is where the AEM developers come into picture. However, as an AEM guides developer, you, you know your components better, right? So they would want you to like, oh, okay, you know a FM data. FM data is the underlying uh, core component for AEM guides. So you, they would ask you to, hey, can you extend the FM data component for download PDF to make it look like this or the table of contents to look like this, right? So that's when you would need that additional knowledge to scale up. Like you would start as an AEM guides developer, but you will eventually transform into an AEM developer as well. 
who again the first three are the early adopters and the next ones join later even ring central we use it um many many more right but these 10 companies are listed on the conference so that's why i have the liberty to use their names i know more but i cannot divulge that information here so as you can see in the conference ey presented how they are using data and aem guides for their global assurance knowledge mayo clinic for medical content clinical trials how are they managing that data using data who own their technical information their the, their product information uh, is hosted using data same way hunter douglas area Arial, blackberry these big companies have multi products right so they need an efficient way to manage a large scale of content so if you are looking for opportunities maybe check this company careers page if you find anything but they it might be disguised as content architect or aem guides or sometimes they hand it over to the agency so they might be uh, fielding they they might be looking for candidates so the companies by themselves may not be looking but if they have a third party agency working for them that company might be looking good old then days you have content right when somebody wants to express something you have an idea story or you have a you have some information that you want to share there were novels books magazines newspaper physical printed media right but end of the day it's content right physical content now with the progression of technology computers we got websites um documents like word docs pdfs ebooks epubs other things right and then you have videos when youtube started like hosted videos we had videos before to mp4 dot mau everything uh, but videos were hosted online too right uh, through um, streaming platforms and then images music so that there, there is physical content that slowly transitioned into uh, a digital content right so that's content but there are two different types of content right one is unstructured content by unstructured let's say you have a word document there is no structure to it from the looks of it yes there is a heading h1 h2 title some properties but a a, a machine may not be able to understand it thoroughly like for, if you give it a word document like if you give uh, an ai a word document and ask it to make sense it will try to understand okay there is an h1 h2 it says how to do something and then there is a paragraph beneath that means it might be an answer for that right it depends on the visual structuring but underneath there is no structure right um it's does not conform to any standard one word document could be speaking in one way another word document could be speaking another way same way with pdf right even though visually there is a, an organization, but it it's not easy for um, uh, a machine to understand it, right? So it, there is no order. It's very hard to find. Like in my in our example, right, when we had to rename a product, uh, it was very difficult to find, um, and reusability becomes very difficult, right? Example, blog posts, web pages, email chains, right? Forum data. This is all unstructured, unorganized data. And even marketing material. If you look at uh, apple.com, when they, if you go to one of their product landing pages, um, phone products may look one way. Uh, MacBook and uh, computer products may look the other way, right? There is, it's unstructured. And they may want to change the UI as much as possible. In those cases, design dictates how the content should be surfaced. Whereas in a structured world, structure comes first, presentation comes next, right? You have your source of truth. Now tell me, how do you want to present that, that content? So that's unstructured content, right? It's very hard to serve via APIs. I'm sure Shrinivas will agree. Like if you have a marketing page and if you want to expose the content of that marketing page via a json servlet right you have to see how the content is stored you have to go through the entire jcr hierarchy write sling models and see which component it is and then have a model for each of those components converting that unstructured component into a structured output is doable but very hard 
right? So it's very difficult to serve unstructured content to serve via APIs. So if you have consumers, if you if you have if you want to input your content to third parties, it becomes very difficult, especially when the scale is big. Okay, with structure, there are many ways, right? JSON is a structured content. XML is a structured content. It it conforms to a schema. Uh, you can go to schema.org if you are writing a recipe. And if you follow the recipe schema, um, then you can say, yes, my my JSON, my recipe is structured, right? The same thing um, with the reviews and other things. As long as it conforms to a schema, you can say it's a structured content. Again, there is a second argument like, okay, I have structured content. Now, how do I uh, achieve reusability and other things? That's when you would need CCMS. But with structured content, your content has a clear hierarchy, um, organization, there's labeling, tags, and metadata, and it will be easily searchable if you want to um, index your content to um, Elasticsearch or Solar, um, you name it, you can feed and have those crawlers index your content and make very good sense and have a better search achievable. It's easy to navigate, right? And it's endless. You have your content, right? It can be on cloud. It can be served on a computer for desktop or mobile app, or you can send it for third-party applications to consume. So it's, it, it becomes easy to share. And that's why you call it omni-channel delivery, right? You can deliver that content into multiple channels if it's structured. And in our case, that was the problem. We used AEM for a brief period to have knowledge based documentation visually structured but underlying it's in jcr it's not structured okay and then we had to migrate to ccms so one example a good example this one let's say you're trying to write directions uh, hours of operations for an art museum uh, if you are on wordpress wix or on a traditional uh, cms you have a rich text editor you you will put it in inside a, a rich text editor, right? You may use bullet points, numbered lists, but it's still a blob of text. That's why it's unstructured, right? When you structure it, you have fields, dedicated fields for opening hours. When is it open? There are checkboxes. Again, this is a rough example, but you see clearly a difference, right? If you give this information to an AI, it may, one AI may understand it good, the other AI may have a little trouble, right? There might be a mix of that happening. That's why now with all the AI, um, generative AI, trust is the major thing, right? People have less trust on the responses that get, that are coming from a generative AI and chatbots. And that's why you may see a chatbot show up on one site and within two months that's gone because the results were not accurate and they are playing around with another AI. And end of the day, they realized the problem is with the content. Content is not structured enough for the AI to make sense of it. So this is one example where you have a structured content and uh, structured content on the right side and unstructured content on the left-hand side. 